use hand gestures to switch between effects like I'm doing right here. First, let's click on the plus in the objects panel and add a post process. Let's choose the distortion, I like that one. Let's see if it works. Cool. Now, let's try to add the hand tracking. And you just want to search for hand and you choose object tracking, hand tracking. Don't want to, you don't need the 3D. So let's use 2D hand tracking for now. Disable the distortion effect here. So you can put your hand up and it seems like it works. For now, you can click on the object tracking here and let's turn down the alpha because we don't need that picture. Okay, let's get blurred again. What we need to do now as well is to add a script. So we have a script here and what else we need to do is to sort of make an empty scene object that the script can live inside. And for good measures, let's call it something meaningful. Let's call it gesture tracker. So the cool thing about Lens Studio is you can just drag it into here. And now the script is there. So to test that works, you can just print hello YouTube. Boom. And this will get printed down there. In case your um, console lock looks different, you can always grab it here and put it down here like I did. So, all right, uh, now we need to get the code for the gestures. So, open up your favorite browser and search for Lens Studio and gestures. So, we don't want the interactive one, we want the general one. That's probably the second result. Cool. We end here. You can have my cookies. And the first thing we need is from here accessing the object tracker. We can do this by copying and pasting this line here. And okay, we save and click on your scene object. And you can see sort of this field here appeared and click on the empty field select object tracking component and go back to the website so interesting here is that lens studio has sort of six gestures that it knows really well you can also train your own I'll make a tutorial about that later. But for now, let's sort of just choose two of them so we can switch between effects. So let's choose the victory and the horns. So the last thing you need to get from this website is this piece of code. All right, let's paste it in. So. So supposedly what this code is going to do is to print out open hand gesture when it's detected. So let's turn off the distortion and see if it works. It worked. You can see down here. If it doesn't work, it you might need to press Ctrl S in the editor here to save the script. Also, it works with the effect. So we don't want open, we want victory. And we can say victory detected. Cool, maybe the light is bad in my room. I'm sure it works pretty well with you guys. Yeah. 
cool. Okay. I see that my console log is a bit out. Cool. Yeah, so it detects it multiple times there. So what else we need to do is to we want to switch between two states and this is the callback function. You can just rename this to victory underscore victory. You can take this down here and call it underscore horns. And you need to rename the function name as well. Underscore horns. Underscore victory. And so let's do horns detected oh. horns and if it's correct it should work now woohoo cool it works so now the question is how do we get access to the post process effect that is the distortion. So, what I would suggest to do is that we sort of keep the distortion as a surprise. So, if you want to access anything outside the script, you would do it by doing these input methods here. So, you do slash slash add input, and usually it does also complete if you're doing the correct thing. So. This post process effect here is considered a scene component, so it's a scene component, and you sort of name it as you want. So since we're dealing with JavaScript, camel case is a nice way to go around, so let's call it post effect. Actually, let's call it distortion, because that's more less generic. Okay, so you press Control S, and you go to your scene component, that is sort of your manager or your gesture tracker and you add the post process so the post process effect you can find it under your camera in effects and here distortion all right so the next thing is to disable this because we want to start the lens by uh, having a clear camera so it's really simple uh, to uh, disable and enable scene of objects and whenever you're referring to inputs uh, you always need to start by writing script dot and here we want to write script dot our name distortion and then you write dot enabled equals false and let's see what happens when we press ctrl s to save cool it disappeared so a script worked. Um, so let's say that um, let's say that horns. I think this effect is more like kind of an evil effect. So let's let's associate it to to the devil's devil sign here. So inside our callback function, uh, we can sort of enable the distortion effect. So let's write script dot distortion dot enabled equals true and control s to save or command s if you're on a Mac. Okay, let's see if it works. Yay! Okay, so the last thing we really need is to switch between these two. So can sort of just copy this line here or actually let's just copy this line here and press ctrl s okay lens is restarted we saved our script activate the distortion disable cool yeah have some fun play around best kind of prize is a surprise <laughs>